hi there and welcome back to another episode at Station Road. Now where we left off in the last video I was taking a closer look at the Albion pub that I built from a very old 1976 builder plus kit. So in today's video there's two areas that I wanted to explore and one is to finish off the base that the pub will actually sit on and calculate out a handle which will be used to lift up that whole upper section of baseboard and that's purely for access to the track for any repairs or cleaning and also as I often consider the potential that we move one day or something like that and the layout needs to be shifted that these components can all sort of be dismantled with relative ease. In the second part of the video we're going to take a look at the other side of the station platforms and this sort of upper level of industrial scene and the embankment that leads up from the platform to this level. So there's a bit of a step-by-step -step process that I took in completing the main structure of this area. So I think without further ado, let's just get into what I got up to on these components. So starting with the pub area, what needs to be done here is to create a base for the pub to actually sit on which will include the pavement out to the street curb here and I'm going to put in a little bit of a car park here for the pub and I might make that a little bit sort of run down and derelict in here and I've just got a vehicle here to sort of get an idea of what sort of size it'll be and it'll come across on this angle through here so to create a little bit more interest so nothing is too grid like and that'll sort of come out around this way somewhere now from this part at the back here that is where we're going to have some hill low lying very low lying hill rising up so probably around here will be some form of very low retaining wall around the back of the pub here and then on the other side will be another parking area which relates to the railway station so what I'm basically doing here is marking out a template on some paper to sort of work out the size of the MDF sheet for here plus this all includes sort of working out the inside of this pub where the handle is going to be as well because once I lift this whole upper level of baseboard up it's going to need a bit of bracing in it because it's only 5mm MDF it will need some form of struts underneath it but obviously not to get in the way of the tracks that are come, going to come running through underneath so we're just drawing out the rest of the dimension here because I sort of felt that maybe this would be squared off with the street as it takes this corner very subtle corner so with the paper template sort of marking out the general relationship next to the railway station it's just easier to take it off the baseboard and then start to sort of map out now I've made a few adjustments and sort of tweaked the distances and so forth allowing for what might sort of look reasonably realistic for a car park and cars that can actually sort of turn around and get out of the car park so I think I've got this sort of worked out now and I've roughly sort of marked out where the pub is situated I've then got to actually cut out a piece in the middle of the MDF which is this sort of area in here and this is going to have a handle on it and the handle is actually going to sort of come across on a diagonal actually uh, because I do want to actually make the handle sort of perpendicular to some struts that are actually going to go underneath this upper level of baseboard So from here it's just simply going to be a case now of transcribing this template to some MDF and then working out the hole inside underneath. So I've now cut out the MDF shape which we have here and then what I've also done is actually cut out the 
section where the building actually sits so we can actually mark that out on the MDF so we know where that's going and then the piece that I've actually cut out of that paper template I will just position this on the base of the pub and from here I can mark out the hole that I need to cut out from inside the actual panel itself because we do have these additional bits of bracing around here so I'll actually come in from that because these bits might actually be quite useful for the gluing side of things and we'll take So that's the cavity that's going to be cut out from in here and that sort of allows around the edge for an area for glue to be applied to anchor the pub onto the small baseboard section. And there's our hole cut out so the theory now is once this building is anchored onto this baseboard in the right position we now have a cavity underneath for the handle and also it helps with gaining access to the wiring just if anything goes wrong in there that it might be easier to access for repairs. So I've now got the pub base area cut out into the shape that it needs to be. So around this edge here, there'll be a bit of a small retaining wall because the hill's gonna slowly rise up here and retaining wall will cut in here as well, which kind of creates this, what would be like a little courtyard here, which might come in handy for kegs and barrels and things like that in that area and then this sort of parking area here so with the hole cut out here I can now work out or where the limitations are for the handle which is going to go on the baseboard and we have this sort of alcove in this area here so that corresponds to over this in this corner here uh, we also have our wire coming through so I'm going to have to work out where that comes down which is going to be sort of in that spot there somewhere so our handle is essentially sort of going to go through on that kind of angle because I sort of want it to be a handle that's perpendicular to the actual board itself so somewhere in there I haven't got a handle at the moment I actually have to go and buy one but I didn't want to sort of do anything about that until I knew what size handle I can actually fit in here and for this building to sit down on top so one of the things I usually do with these components is I give them a coat of grey just a base grey paint which is what I've done on the station component and that sort of helps to seal this MDF in because as we know it can tend to warp particularly if you've got damp atmospheric conditions and with winter coming on here there's the tendency for it to get a little bit cold and damp here in the garage so that is one of the drawbacks of this layout. Right so while the paint's drying on the base layer for the pub we'll take a look at the other component that I was going to look at in today's video and it's this area in here so I previously described how there'll be a upper level here some more industrial buildings and an embankment that slopes down so what I've actually done as I've done numerous times before is make up a cardboard temporary structure so that we can have a look 
to see how it might work. So this is just some from chopped up cardboard boxes that have been hot glued together and this is a sort of a, a very rough idea of how this might work and how it's going to fit in. So there's the cavity underneath for where this hidden track will be so that that's tucked in underneath there and the cardboard components may possibly be the rigid MDF components and then here of course will be more of this foam material to create our embankment. Now I've got to organize and work out something for this end here because what I'll do is I want to actually tie the level through here and create this sort of angled tunnel entrance through here. Now somehow I've got to sort of work out how this embankment might slope down so it's not going to be this sort of hard edge corner like I've got it here at the moment. So it may actually be an MDF layer here that's actually on a bit of a curve that runs parallel to the curve of the platform below and from this end here behind the station there's going to be a access road of some sort that will run along this area here. So by having this sort of upper level what I'm actually able to do is recycle some of these industrial buildings that I had that were obviously down at track level. Now I'm going to have to alter this building because this originally used to have a small siding running through the middle of it and then we've got another sort of low relief piece as well which I may well return to where it used to be at the end of the building and then for the back scene I will continue on this factory that's in the back scene that will actually continue on and around and head off into the distance. So quickly going back to this area now, it's of course the next day and this pub base layer has now dried and I've now fixed the pub to the base layer and we sort of have this set up now. So underneath here we now also have our handle and this time I've chosen a black handle because I remember when I did a chrome handle underneath the church you could see it when the lights were on and reflecting off the chrome. So if we just shift some of these temporarily placed buildings out of the way we can now lift up this baseboard via the handle and the whole thing lifts up and what I've done underneath here is put in some struts which give it a little bit more rigidity but also without making it too heavy that's the main thing really is sort of not to end up with components that are just too heavy and rather unwieldy So that just slots into place like that. So as was discussed earlier, it's a case of assembling the component that's going to go in here. Now one of the interesting aspects to take into consideration is the level here is lower than the level here. So the level will continue on to about here and then at this point it will actually rise up just a small amount and I'll probably do this slight slope out of some of the high density foam. So we've moved forward just a little bit further now and one of the things that I needed to do before I sort of went any further was to install the low level retaining wall which butts up against the edge of the platform and 
unfortunately I didn't have any G clamps that were deep enough to clamp over either side so what I've actually done is just clamped a piece of wood to the back and brace these with some strips of timber just to hold it in place while the glue dries. So the height of this retaining wall is the same height as the one that's on the other side and then of course and further down the track this will be covered in some brick paper of some sort. So I've also assembled this tunnel portal unit into a more permanent fashion and it is also just constructed out of MDF and there's going to be brick wall down this part and of course there's still a lot of components on this to finish off but the general structure is now in place and that will just fit nicely into the spot here and the angle coming down here now meets with this low level retaining wall around here. So I've now assembled also the upper level of baseboard which of course is going to have industrial buildings on it and once again this is just made up out of some 3 mil MDF and that will position in there. Can't do it at the moment while there's bracing in there supporting that lower level retaining wall at the moment but the basic structure is here for that part. These strips that are glued along the back of course will support the backdrop that goes up behind So once again moved ahead a little bit further and now applied a little bit of wall to the top of this upper level piece of baseboard and also just a small amount of brickwork across this front edge. Now this is going to be this hill which will come up and it will come past that point but it's just sort of safe to have that there and then I can form the hill to suit. So this now fits snugly in this shape and I've also added in this wee bit of foam here as a sort of an elevated area where it's going to meet the level of this. So this will be a detachable section of the layout so that I can gain access to this hidden siding underneath here and it also means that once I've continued with a little bit more scenic work on this which includes the tarmac or cobblestone areas that might be here that I can do some weathering off the layout. So that just fits snugly in there and there's a wee notch in this elevated area which of course is where this building is going to tuck in and fit in here. And we've got this small very low relief piece of building here which of course will sit on the end like so. And then for the back scene that will continue on now I've just stuck this on piece of card this is just a temporary back scene it's to sort of gauge really what's going to happen how this is going to carry on and so this is going to sit here on this component of the back end so it completes the corner of this factory through here now I'm actually going to stretch this building out a bit further so it runs in behind this building a bit more and then of course we've got to do something down at this end where the street runs off so there'll be the continuation of the street in the actual back scene itself. So in terms of organising all of that I'll work that up on the computer and get a nice print done at the local printers. So the next step really I think is I'll work out the high density foam area that's actually going to go in here mark out that slotting in there and then that foam will actually be glued to this component of the upper level so the entire area becomes a lift out section. Right so I've now laid up some of this high density foam 
I've got essentially two layers and then just a little bit down here and then shape this to fit within this space so essentially what I did the easiest way was just to create a paper template which I laid down and then put this unit here on top and then just marked out the shape that it needed to be for it to sit in this area so when it came to making up this piece here which is of course the same as what I did here I just used some Gorilla Glue which is actually a really good glue for polystyrene because it doesn't melt the polystyrene and it seems to have quite a fast drying time and just to make it a little bit more grippy I of course sanded the surfaces to be glued just to rough them up a little bit and that was a wee trick that I found on another YouTube channel and I really honestly I can't remember who it was but I think it certainly does help so what I'm going to do here is just mark out the lower retaining wall and the shape of these steps so that we've got a line here that I can cut to and then of course I can take this off the board and start carving it up and I just use a craft knife to start carving up this polystyrene of course if you had a hot wire it would probably be a lot quicker and easier to work with so we'll go and cut this up and then bring it back into position right so I've now carved this hunk of polystyrene into an embankment and the idea with that brickwork that I had applied to here is so I can actually have a little bit of undulation here in this embankment so it's not perfectly at the same height all the way along so I think it's certainly starting to take shape now and you can get a real sense of how this branch line station is going to work with its high level station building and the town scene up above so the next steps for this embankment of course is giving it a base coat of paint and then of course doing scenic materials and so forth which will obviously tie in with the embankment on the other side which of course I'll do at the same time then of course we've got our industrial scene up here and as I mentioned the continuation of the back scene which is something I need to sit down on the computer and work that out because I also need to tie in the town scene as well so as mentioned probably the next stages in this area will be the back scene and I'll start to sort of hunt around and see what I can find that might be suitable for down at the other end where the street carries off into the distance and also in this area of the town scene there is some additional buildings which I'm going to be adding in and they're going to be sort of made up of some kit bashed Metcalf kits that I had floating around and that will be also potentially another project to run through on the Station Road channel so as I mentioned in the last episode there was a wee sneak peek at the first review I was looking at for the Hornby Thompson locomotive and that will actually be the next video that's going to pop up on the Station Road channel so we'll leave it there for now but I'd just like to take this opportunity to say a huge massive thank you to everyone who watches the channel and offers their comments and likes the support is fantastic and it is really greatly appreciated as I've often said in the past there are numerous comments unfortunately I haven't been able to get to yet but I will endeavour to get to those in the near future so I'll sign off for now please everyone do take care look after yourselves and I will catch you next time bye for now